Hey guys, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Walt Disney World attraction Mission Space, how it works, and what doesn't make sense. <laughs> My name is Austin Searles, I'm an aerospace engineer, and this is Aviation Austin. If you're new here, please subscribe for more content just like this. This is part two of my Mission Space series, so if you missed part one, go ahead and click the link right here, and you can check out what the green side has to offer. As I explained last time, there are two different experiences on this ride, a green side and the orange side. The orange side is the more intense side, and that's what we're going to focus on today. I also explained in my last video that this is a motion simulator ride. However, this simulator on the orange side is not a mission around the Earth, but a mission to Mars. The mechanics of the orange side are much more complex, so before we take a deep dive into how this works, I'm going to explain some basic principles of physics for you. So on this ride, you pull a lot of G's. And you may have heard people use this phrase, pulling G's, in a lot of Hollywood movies, such as this. You were in a 4G, inverted dive with a MiG-28? Yes, ma'am. When you hear people talk about G-forces or pulling G's, what they're actually referring to is a factor of gravitational forces you're experiencing on your body. For example, if you're sitting or standing while watching this video, you're experiencing 1G or your normal gravitational force. The way that you can increase your G-load or pull G's is by accelerating. Everyone has felt the effects of G-forces in one way or another. We can explain why this happens by looking at the physics of a roller coaster. As you can see on this launch coaster, the people are at rest. Newton's first law tells us that an object that is at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an external force. In this case, people are at rest, and they will stay at rest unless they're acted upon by the seat. The seat of the roller coaster pushes them from 0 to 82 miles an hour in 2.3 seconds, giving them a G-load of 1.62. In other words, if you were to pull 2 Gs and you weighed 100 pounds, all of a sudden your 100 pounds now feels like you weigh 200 pounds. These G-forces can be a lot of fun on things like roller coasters, but they can be absolutely deadly for pilots. Pilots routinely experience high G-loads as they have to execute high-speed aerial maneuvers. has developed special techniques and technologies to help prepare these pilots to perform these high-speed aerial maneuvers. One of the ways that they prepare them is something called the centrifuge. The dreaded centrifuge, as shown here, helps pilots experience 6 to 9 Gs. Training in the centrifuge can help them prevent what is called g lock or g loss of consciousness. G-lock is caused by high G-forces exerted on the body, so much so that the blood is literally forced out of your brain and into your lower extremities. This can cause rapid loss of consciousness. In order to prevent this, the military has developed what is called a G-suit. This G-suit has bladders that inflate and push the blood back up into the brain to prevent the pilot from losing consciousness and possibly crashing. By this point, you're probably asking yourself, what in the world does this have to do with mission space? And I'll tell you in one word, everything. Unless you pay careful attention to what's going on, you might not even know that you are actually in a centrifuge while on the ride. The Imagineers have combined the concept of the centrifuge used to train pilots and astronauts and a motion simulator to create the hundred million dollar experience that is mission space. Similar to the way that the roller coaster seats accelerated those people from zero to 82 miles an hour, the centrifuge is accelerating your body so that you feel up to 2.5 Gs. Pulling 2.5 Gs is similar to the feelings that astronauts experience on liftoff. Of course, the huge difference being they are nowhere near as intense and they're nowhere near as enduring. In my last video I talked about the possibility of feeling disoriented on motion simulators. 
On the orange side, the risk of you feeling disoriented and getting nauseous or sick are much higher. The reason for that is because, like I said, you're actually spinning, but your visual input is telling you you're blasting off into orbit. So as you're spinning, your inner ears are telling you you're spinning pretty fast, while your eyes are saying, no, you're, you're going straight. And that's why in the pre-show video, they tell you Leaning forward, closing your eyes, or looking left or right during your flight could disorient you. So keep your head back against the headrest, keep your eyes open at all times, and focus straight ahead, even if you start to feel disoriented. This is the best way to avoid feeling disoriented. Make your brain buy into the illusion. Look forward, don't look side to side, because as soon as you take your eyes from that screen, you're going to be confused and you're going to start to feel sick. The beginning of the ride on the orange side begins the same way as the green side. You're seated, the video starts, you tilt back, you feel yourself tilting back, and then blast off. But this time there's a dramatic difference in sensation. Like I explained earlier, you experience 2.5 Gs at blast off. In other words, if you're 200 pounds, all of a sudden you feel like you're 500 pounds. It's one thing to experience high g-forces for a moment, but to sustain high g-forces for a long time, that feeling is out of this world. After liftoff, you enter into a low Earth orbit. From low Earth orbit, you are then accelerated into a hyperbolic trajectory into lunar orbit insertion. I love that they included this part about going around the moon in here. Essentially what this is, is a, a gravity assist. In other words, it's a slingshot around the moon. After your gravity assist around the moon, you then enter into hypersleep. And I don't really need to go into why that's science fiction. You are then awakened by the sound of an alarm because you're in a meteor shower. Again, very unrealistic, but not my main gripe. This leads me to my main complaint about the orange side, the entry into Mars atmosphere. The reason that the entry into Mars atmosphere bothers me is very basic orbital mechanics. The first stage of interplanetary travel is what's called a parking orbit, which we did experience in this ride of a low Earth orbit. The next is an interplanetary trajectory. In this case, what we should use is what's referred to as a heliocentric orbit, or an orbit around the Sun, like this. But on Mission Space, we do everything right right up until this point right here. And then we decided, oh, yeah, orbital mechanics? Uh, we, we don't do that here. So how Never mind. We're gonna go straight down to the planet. Overall, the orange side holds up much better than the green side from a scientific standpoint, from a thrill standpoint, and even from a storytelling standpoint. In fact, it holds up so well that Space Shuttle Discovery Commander Charles Bolden Jr said, quote, it gives someone who has never flown a feeling of that sensation of liftoff. As the g-forces build up, it's very realistic. This brings me to my final complaint about the ride. Who puts a runway at the edge of a cliff? You had the entire planet. Pick a better spot. Good work team. You made it to the landing site. Welcome to Mars. And welcome to the Astronaut Corps. The level of detail, theming, and Disney magic that went into this ride truly are awe-inspiring. I adore this ride. In my mind, it will always be a Disney classic. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and let me know down in the comments below what you want me to react to next. Thanks so much and Godspeed.